Today we are going to make a 3D model of a cell. Models are tools we use to help us better understand something. Cells are really small, and even though we can see them under a standard microscope, we usually can't see all of the organelles that make up the cell system. So we use models to represent the organelles and help us better understand the system. The best part of this model is that you can eat it when you're done. If you'd like to make this project at home, you'll need the following materials. A package of jello, yellow or another transparent color, Twizzlers, Twizzler bites or red vines, gobstoppers, cake sprinkles, jelly beans or jelly bellies. Be sure to grab a bag that has green, red, and blue in it. A plastic baggie, I like the ones with the fold tops. A plastic cup and a spoon. Start by making the jello according to the package directions. It's helpful to let the jello solution sit in the refrigerator for about an hour or two before continuing. You want the solution to still be mostly liquid, but if it has started to solidify, then the candies will become suspended in the jello instead of sinking to the bottom. While you're waiting for your jello solution to partially set up, you can prepare your candy and cup. Each of the items we use will represent a part of the cell system. In models, we use different objects to represent the concept or object we are trying to imitate. In this case, we're using candy to represent parts of a cell system. If you're using Twizzlers or Red Vines, you'll want to cut them into smaller pieces. Set aside two small pieces for your model. You will also need, need one gobstopper of any color, one blue jelly bean, three red jelly beans, three green jelly beans, and a pinch of cake sprinkles. We're going to start by creating a model of a plant cell. Plant cells have two organelles that animal cells do not have. One of these organelles is the cell wall, a rigid structure that surrounds and protects the rest of the cell and gives the cell a defined shape. The plastic cup, which is rigid, will represent the cell wall. We'll build the rest of the model inside the cup. The plastic baggie represents the cell membrane. The cell membrane is found in both animal and plant cells. In animal cells, it is the only barrier. In plant cells, it sits just inside the cell wall. Since we're creating a model of a plant cell, we'll place the baggie inside the, inside the cup. The cell membrane controls what goes in and out of the cell through a process called osmosis. The inside of a cell is where we find the rest of the organelles, as well as a nutrient-rich fluid substance called cytoplasm. All of the other organelles float inside the cytoplasm. Pour the jello solution into the baggie. The jello solution represents the cytoplasm. Now it's time to start adding our organelles. We'll start with the gobstopper. The gobstopper represents the nucleus, the place where the DNA is stored. Next, we'll add our three red jelly beans. The jelly beans represent the mitochondria. A cell's mitochondria uses the process of cellular respiration to create energy for the cell. The red vine pieces will be added next. The red vine pieces represent the endoplasmic reticulum, an organelle that is responsible for producing and transporting various things around the cell, such as proteins and other molecules. We'll also add a blue jelly bean. The blue jelly bean represents the vacuole, an organelle that is responsible for storage, usually of water. The green jelly beans represent the chloroplast. Like the cell wall, chloroplasts are only found in plant cells. They're responsible for making food in the form of sugar through a process called photosynthesis. Lastly, we'll add a few cake sprinkles. The cake sprinkles represent the ribosomes, an organelle that builds the proteins that the cell needs. Once all of the organelles have been added, fold the baggie top and place the model in the refrigerator for another two to three hours so that it can set properly. There are many more organelles in a cell that we have not included in this model. You can always expand on this model by doing your own research to discover what other organelles exist in the cell, then choosing different candies to represent those additional organelles. You can even challenge yourself to make different models of specific types of cells, such as a blood cell or a skin cell. While all cells, for the most part, have the basic organelles of nucleus, mitochondria, and cell membrane, cells that do specific jobs have different organelles to meet that, their specific needs. 
Once the jello has set completely, you're ready to dissect your model and turn it into a model of an animal cell. Do you remember which two organelles are in the plant cell but not in the animal cell? Start by taking the baggie out of the cup. The cup represented the cell wall, one of the organelles that is unique to the plant cell. Next, use a spoon to carefully remove the green jelly beans. The green jelly beans represent the chloroplast, an organelle responsible for photosynthesis and also only found in a plant cell. Now you have a model of an animal cell. Notice that it does not hold its shape as well as the plant cell model did. The cup gave the model a defined shape and structure just as a cell wall does. The cell membrane, like a baggie, is flexible and doesn't have a defined shape. I hope you learned a little about cell organelles and about making models. Remember, when building your own model, to be thoughtful about the materials you choose and how you represent each part. The purpose of the model is to help us better understand something. What kind of model will you make?